Hello there, Manipa here, and um, today we're going to discuss about uh, about um, equations of motion, some of the basic and important equations of motion in physics, and uh, they're right there. Remember to subscribe and um, share and leave your comments below. So, today I'm going to look at about six equations, but there are more than six, but these are some of the basic and important equations in our junior physics. So, we have our first equation, second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. They can be arranged in any order. The meaning of the symbols are x uh, represents distance, a is acceleration, u is initial velocity, v is final velocity, and m is mass in kilograms. Um, I have three questions which I've tried to write there in, in, in trying to cement how these equations can be applied. So my first question there reads, velocity of a bus is uniformly reduced from 50 to 20 meters per second. Therefore, this bus is slowing down. If the deceleration is negative 5 meters per second, how much is the distance of deceleration? Therefore, how long did it take, not how long, but how far did this bus travel in its deceleration period? So I'll pick this equation here, which is our equation number 3 on my list there. It's equation number 3. Therefore, our final velocity squared is equals to initial velocity squared uh, plus 2. Uh, by acceleration by distance. Therefore, I make distance my my subject. Then I have uh, this arrangement here. Then I replace my variables with my quantities. Final is 20, initial is 50. 2, there is my constant. Uh, and negative 5 is my deceleration value. It's negative because the bus was actually slowing down. If it was increasing speed, it would have been positive and it wouldn't have been called deceleration. So I simply square my two values up there. I have 400 minus 2, 500 over minus 10. So finally, I have this. After the subtraction here, I have 2100, uh, negative, negative 2100. Then I have over um, negative 10. And the distance to which this bus traveled in its deceleration was 210 meters. This is how far the bus went um, in its change of velocity from 50 to 20, in its slow down, in its deceleration. Question number two, a 2 kg stone is dropped from a 40 meter height. Take g to be 10 meters per second uh, squared. Uh, question A, uh, what, is the, what is its velocity after one second? B, how far does it drop in three seconds? C, uh, kinetic energy before it hits the ground. D, magnitude of force of gravity on the stone. The solution. I go for number one, as usual. I picked this equation here on my list there. It's uh, equation number number two. Okay, they can be arranged in any order, but I picked this equation. I first of all look at what has been given in the question, and then I look at uh, which equation has got most of what has been given in the question. I've got the height, I've got the acceleration due to gravity, I've got the mass, and then in my sub-question here, A, I've got the time. So what is being looked for is final velocity. So this equation here is appropriate because if this stone was dropped, it means it wasn't moving at the beginning. So uh, I write my equation, I replace the variables. Initial velocity is zero because it was just dropped. It came from a position where it wasn't moving. It was just dropped. Plus 10, which is my acceleration due to gravity, it's a positive because the stone was dropped towards the center of the earth. It was dropped and pulled by gravity in the direction of the force of gravity. Therefore, the acceleration is positive. If the stone was going up, then acceleration would have been negative. So time is 1. So 10 times 1 gives me 10 meters per second. That would be the velocity of the stone after 1 second. B, I pick this equation here, which is equation number 1 on my list. A distance is equal to ut plus half at squared. So what's the question? How far does it drop in three seconds? So it's already x is already our subject. So initial velocity is zero because the stone was held, then dropped. So during its uh, as it is being held, its velocity is zero. So zero times t is zero. So the equation remains like this, half at squared. Acceleration is 10 because it's g. And then t, we are told that in three seconds, in three seconds therefore our time is three and since it's t squared this becomes nine then half times ten becomes five then the distance it will cover in its four in the first three seconds is going to be 45 meters 45 meters 
Um, number C there reads kinetic energy before it hits the ground. Therefore, we have kinetic energy. The, the, the formula is Ke is equals to half mv squared, which can be written just like this, half mv squared. Um, I replace my variables. 2 is my mass, which is this one. And then... Um, um, And then um, my velocity is 28.28 squared. How did I find this velocity, which is my V here? I have to use this other equation again, which is among my equations, which is equation number five on my list. Therefore, V is equals to 2GH. This is just uh, an equation used to calculate the velocity of a freely falling object. You can also use this equation to calculate for the height through which a given object uh, has fallen if I given its velocity in its fall. So here I'm looking for velocity. 2 is a constant. G is a constant, which is our 10. So root 2 times 10 times 40 because in our question, this stone was uh, dropped from 40 meters, which is our height. So just before hitting the ground, the velocity of the stone will be V is equal to two, root 2GH. So my H is 40. Finally, I've got 800. Root 800 is um, 28.284. The list, the, 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 the decimals go on, but I've rounded it off to that. So I plug in this 28.28 in my equation, but squaring this gives me back the eight, 800. Over 2, so these two... Uh, okay, let me just go all the way. 2 times 800 gives me 1,600, which is 1,600, over 2 in the from the formula here, over 2, which gives me 800 joules, 800 joules. So basically, that's how you go about it. Uh, you first of all have to assess the data that you've been given. If possible, you write the data somewhere and then see the equation that will give you uh, at least all the variables except for one that you're looking for. So my third and last question is as follows. Um, question three, a stone is thrown upward vertically at, a, at an initial velocity of 30 meters. Okay, a stone is thrown upwards at an initial velocity of 30 meters, ignoring air resistance and taking G to be 10 meters uh, per second squared. A, the sub question A, calculate the maximum height reached. B, what is the velocity of at the highest point? Then C, how long does it take to reach the ground? Therefore, it goes up and down. So how long does it take to reach the ground? So A, I pick the equation there, which is equation number three on my list. And uh, so my equation, the equation I've picked on it is this one from the equation, but uh, V squared is equals to U squared plus A. I mean 2 by a by x so I make x my subject then I replace the variables remember um, um, initial velocity is 0 because the stone was thrown therefore it was held at the beginning then it was thrown and finally you have um, uh, I mean the final velocity is 0 because at maximum height the velocity is always um, 0 so initial is squared over 2a therefore minus initial squared over 2 a, a which is acceleration due to gravity and since the stone was going upwards the gravity or the acceleration is negative so finally i've got 900 uh, minus 900 over negative 20 giving me 45 meters so the height was actually 45 meters that was the maximum height number b what is its velocity at the highest point velocity is zero but if you want to prove it you can still calculate where you say initial velocity was 30 and then the acceleration due to gravity was minus 10 because the stone was going upwards uh time taken is three seconds as in the question okay as in the question Time taken is 3 seconds. You can even tell because um, if the, the rate of change of acceleration is 10 meters per second squared and the initial velocity is 30, therefore after every second, this velocity reduced by 10. So it will take 3 seconds for the stone to reach its maximum height. Therefore, time is 3 seconds. And finally, our velocity is 0. At the maximum height, the stone has to stop momentarily before beginning to fall down. So number C, which is my final equation there, uh, the question is... Um, how long does it take to reach the ground? You have to find the time for going up and the time for coming down, which will actually give you six seconds. But for the sake of just calculating, we simply use this formula. You can deduce just by looking at the question. But um, for the sake of calculation, we use this formula, which is equation number four on my list. And so we say we make T our subject. And so this is how we make T our subject. And finally, we replace with the variables. This is... um. Um, initial plus final the final is zero because uh, at maximum height the velocity is zero so 
we have 30 plus 0, then 2 times 45, which is our height. Okay, the distance covered when going up. Therefore, the time taken is 30 seconds. For going up and some time and same time for coming down. Therefore, 3 by 2 gives me 6 seconds. Hopefully, this was helpful. Remember to subscribe and leave your comments. Thank you.